Hi everyone, today we'll be going over accounts. May June 2022, paper 2 2, question number 2. This is structured paper 2, which consists of 4 questions, 2 of 30 marks and 2 of 15 marks, and we are also given a time limit of 1 hour and 30 minutes. And since question number 2 is of 15 marks, we will be attempting to solve this question under 15 minutes. Now, without any further delay, let's get started. V Limited owns various non current assets, and non current assets depreciate due to a number of factors, including wear and tear. Now, for the first part of this question, we need to state two reasons, other than wear and tear, why non-current assets depreciate. So the first reason would be technological change, because if we have some sort of machinery, then over the years, there will be creation of new machineries, which is far more efficient than the current one, right? So that makes the value of the current machinery to deplete. Let's write it down. Technological. change then for the second one that could be obsolescence because if there is a new better efficient non-current assets in the market then the current non-current assets will be obsolete meaning that the current non-current asset will have way lesser value compared to the new one which makes their use very minimal let's write it down so that's obsolescence Okay, this concludes the first part of this question. Now we can move towards the second one. We are given additional information. Businesses must apply the consistency concept when accounting for depreciation. And for the second part of this question, we need to describe the consistency concept. So consistency concept basically states that the company should be consistent with the accounting policies that it applies over the years. Let's write it down. Accounting methods. are applied in the same way in each accounting period. This is remaining consistent to one accounting concept over the years, right? Enabling valid comparison. from year to year and the main reason to remain consistent is to enable the comparison right so if we are applying a straight line basis depreciation this year and then we switch to a reducing balance method then obviously the depreciation value will be different for those two years right and the comparison may not be valid because the accounting policy is not really the same Okay, so this concludes the second part of this question. Now we can move towards the third one. We are given additional information. The company's financial year ends on 31st December and the property was purchased on 1st January 2019 at a cost of 850000 Property is depreciated at 5% per annum on cost, meaning that this is a straight line method. Then on 1st January 2021, the directors decided to revalue the property at 1,200,000. Now for the third part of this question, we need to prepare the journal entry to record the revaluation of the property. Since we are revaluing the property at 1st January 2021, we require the netbook value of this property on the date of 1st January 2021. And we know that the property was purchased on 2019, right? So let's make a timeline. So this is 2019, 2020, and 2021. And the revaluation is being done at the beginning of 2021, right? And the property was purchased at the beginning of 2019. So this means that we have used the property for two years, meaning that we need to charge our depreciation for these two years in order to figure out its net book value. Now, since we know that the depreciation is being charged on a straight line basis, this means that the depreciation charge for each year is going to remain the same. So let's figure out the depreciation charge per annum. That is just going to be the cost of the property, which is 850000 And since this is a straight line method, we can just multiply it with our depreciation rate of 5%. So that's times 0.05. This gives the depreciation charge per annum to be 42,500. 
and we require the depreciation charge for two years, right? Let's figure that out right here. So depreciation charge for two years, that's just going to be two times the depreciation charge per annum, right? So that's 42,500 times two, which gives the depreciation charge for two years to be 85,000. Okay, now we can easily figure out our net book value since the depreciation charge for two years is actually our accumulated depreciation or provision for depreciation. We just have to subtract this from the cost in order to figure out the net book value. So we have the cost of 850,000 and our depreciation charge for two years or the accumulated depreciation is 85,000. So this brings our net book value to be 765,000. Okay, now we just need to compare this value with our revalued amount. So we can definitely see that this is an upward revaluation, meaning that the value of the property has been increased. So let's figure out the increment. That is just going to be the difference of the new value and our net book value. So we have our new value to be 1,200,000 and we just need to subtract our net book value of 765,000. And this gives our increment to be 435,000. So this is the total amount by which the property is being revalued, meaning that this is the amount that needs to be recorded in our revaluation reserve. And since revaluation reserve is a part of the capital, this will be recorded on the credit side. So let's record that first. We can just record our revaluation reserve. And this will have the amount of 435,000 on the credit side. Now we need to figure out which factors actually fund this revaluation of 435,000. So whenever we're talking about revaluation upwards, the first thing that we need to fund is with our accumulated depreciation. So out of 435,000, we have our accumulated depreciation to be 85,000, right? So 85,000 is being funded through our accumulated depreciation and then the remaining value will actually be funded from the property itself so the remaining value is just the difference between our total revaluation and the accumulated depreciation so that's 435,000 minus the accumulated depreciation of 85,000 and this results in the property to be 350,000 in the debit side of this journal okay so let's record this value under the heading of our property and that amounted to 350,000 and the remaining amount of 85,000 is actually recorded under the heading of accumulated depreciation or provision for depreciation let's do that so that's provision for depreciation amounting to 85,000 now this balances our journal and this concludes the third part of this question. Now we can move towards the fourth one. We are given additional information. First of all, let's have a look at our question. The fourth part of this question requires us to calculate the charge for depreciation of furniture and equipment for the year under 31st December 2021. Okay, so we can see that furniture and equipment was purchased on 1st January 2019 at a cost of 140,000. Okay, I'm just going to prepare a timeline. So we have 2019 and we purchased here, right? So that's an addition of 140,000. Then furniture and equipment is depreciated at 10% per annum. This is the rate of depreciation using the reducing balance method. Under the reducing balance method, we figure out our depreciation by multiplying this rate with the net book value, right? Okay, then for the third one, we are given that on 1st September 2021, the director sold furniture and equipment which had cost 21,000 on 1st January 2019. All right, then a full year's depreciation is charged in the year of purchase but not in the year of disposal. Okay, so we have the year 2020, nothing happened in this year, and then we have 2021. What we know is that around September, we sold the furniture of cost 21,000, and this cost was actually on this date. Okay, and then 
The fourth information states that a full year's depreciation is charged in the year of purchase but none in the year of disposal, meaning that we should not be charging any depreciation on this furniture with the cost 21000 in the year 2021. Okay, for this, we first need to figure out our netbook value at 1st January 2021 for our total furniture with the value of 140000 Let's do that. So we will be figuring out our depreciation charge for the year ended 31st December 2019, which is the first year. And since we're talking about the first year or the year of purchase, there is not going to be any accumulated depreciation, meaning that the netbook value will be equal to its cost, that is 140,000. And we just need to multiply it with our depreciation rate of 10%, which we can write down as 0 0.10. Okay, so now this gives our depreciation charge for the first year or the year ended on 31st December 2019 to be 140,000 times 0 0.10, which results in 14,000. Now we can figure out our depreciation charge for the second year because nothing happens in the year 2020, right? We still have all of the furniture and equipment that we purchased on 1st January 2019. So we can charge our depreciation. That's depreciation charge for the year ended 31st December 2020. For this year, however, we have accumulated depreciation, and that is going to be the depreciation charge of the previous year, right? So our netbook value is just going to be the cost of 140,000 minus the accumulated depreciation of 14,000. And this is our netbook value. Now we can just multiply it with the rate of 10%, so that's times 0 0.10, and this will give the depreciation charge for the year ended 31st December 2020. That will be 140,000 minus 14,000 times 0 0.10, which results in the value of 12,600. Now we can easily figure out the netbook value before the sale of furniture. So that's before sale. And we can just figure it out to be the netbook value at 31st December 2020. So that's just going to be the cost of 140,000 minus the accumulated depreciation. And accumulated depreciation is going to be the depreciation charge for the year ended 31st December 2019 and the depreciation charge for the year ended 31st December 2020. So that's 14,000 minus 12,600, which results in the netbook value before sale to be 113,400. Okay, now we move towards our sold furniture. And sold furniture had the cost of 21,000, so we're just going to repeat the same process for only this particular furniture and equipment, meaning that we will be figuring out its depreciation charge for the year ended 31st December 2019 and 31st December 2020. So for the furniture with the cost of 21,000, the depreciation charge for the year ended 31st December 2019 is going to be cost times the rate because we do not have any accumulated depreciation since this is the year of purchase. So that's 21,000 times the rate of 10%. And this gives the depreciation charge for the first year to be 21,000 times 0 0.10, which results in 2,100. Now we move towards figuring out the depreciation charge for the year ended. Thirty first December two thousand twenty. All right. So for this year, however, we have our accumulated depreciation, which will be the depreciation of last year. So our netbook value is going to be twenty one thousand minus the depreciation charge, which is two thousand one hundred. And now we will multiply it with our rate of ten percent. So that's times zero point one zero. So the depreciation charge for the second year, or the year ended 31st December 2020, is going to be 21,000 minus 2,100 times 0 0.10, which results in the value of 1,890. Now we will figure out its netbook value. So that is just going to be the cost, 21,000, minus the accumulated depreciation, which is going to be the sum of the depreciation charge for the year ended 2019 and 2020. 
So that's minus 2100 minus 1890, which results in the net book value of the disposed furniture to be 21,000 minus 2100 minus 1890 to be 17,010. Okay, now in order to figure out the net book value on which we need to calculate our depreciation charge for the year and the 31st December 2021, we just need to subtract our net book value of the disposed vehicle, which we just figured out, from our total net book value before sale, which we figured out above. So let's figure out our required net book value. So that's our total net book value of 113,000. 400 minus the net book value of the disposed vehicle that's 17,010 okay so the required net book value on which we charge the depreciation for the year in the 31st December 2020 is just going to be 113,400 minus 17,010 which results in the value of 96,390 now we can finally figure out our depreciation charge for the year ended 31st December 2021. So that's going to be our net book value times our rate of 10% since we are charging depreciation under reducing balance method. And we already figured out our net book value to be 96,390. So that's 96,390 times the rate of 10% which we can write down as 0 0.10. This gives the required depreciation for the year ended 31st December 2021 to be 9,639. All right, this concludes the fourth part of this question. Now we can move towards the fifth one. We are again given additional information. Let's have a look at our question first. The fifth question requires us to prepare the motor vehicle disposal account for the year ended 31st December 2021. Let's have a look at the additional information. Motor vehicles were purchased on 1st January 2020 at a cost of 84,000. All right. Then the motor vehicles are depreciated at 20% per annum using the reducing balance method. So that's the rate of depreciation. And since we're using the reducing balance method, it means that this rate of 20% will be charged at our net book value rather than the cost. Then on 1st November 2021, a new motor vehicle was purchased at a cost of 44,000. A check for 17,000 was paid for the vehicle and the balance was covered by the part exchange of a vehicle which had a cost 40,000 on 1st January 2020. Okay, so out of 44,000, 17,000 was paid by check. So let's figure out the remaining balance. That's the difference between the total cost and the check payment. So that's 44,000 minus 17,000. This results in the remaining balance to be 27,000. All right. And we can see that the part exchange value for the vehicle is 27,000 and this vehicle had a cost of 40,000 on 1st January 2020. Now in order to figure out whether this disposed vehicle was disposed on a loss or on profit, we just need to figure out the net book value before disposal. And for the fourth information, we know that a full year's depreciation is charged in the year of purchase but none in the year of disposal. And since we're disposing this vehicle in the year 2021, no depreciation will be charged on this year, meaning that the only depreciation charge is in the year 2020 since this vehicle was bought on 1st January 2020. So let's figure out the depreciation of disposed vehicle. And this is for the year 2020. Okay, so that's just going to be the cost times the rate since we know that this is the year of purchase and there can be no accumulated depreciation. And we know our cost to be 40000 so that's 40,000 times the rate, which is 20%. So we can write it down as 0 0.20. This gives the depreciation of the disposed vehicle to be 8,000. And let's figure out the netbook value now. Netbook value is just going to be the cost minus our total accumulated depreciation, which is just the depreciation charge for the year 2020. We have our cost 40,000 minus the accumulated depreciation of 8,000. This results in the net book value to be 32,000. Okay, so the vehicle valued at 32,000 was only part exchange for the value of 27,000, meaning that the net book value is greater than our part exchange value, so there is definitely a loss. 
So the loss is just the difference between net book value and the part exchange value. That's 32,000, which is the net book value, minus the part exchange value of 27,000. And the loss on disposal is 5,000. Okay, now we can easily create our motor vehicle disposal account. We know that in the disposal account, the cost of the disposed vehicle is always recorded on the debit side. And we can record it under the heading of motor vehicle. We are clearly given that the cost of the disposed vehicle is 40,000. So let's record this value. Then the total accumulated depreciation of the disposed vehicle is always recorded on the credit side. So let's write it down. That can be depreciation charge. And the total accumulated depreciation is just the depreciation of the disposed vehicle on the year 2020, right? And that we figured out to be 8,000. Let's record it. Then we also record the disposed value in our credit side as well. So we can record it under the heading of motor vehicle. And in this case, the disposed value or the part exchange value is 27,000. Let's write it down. And we also already figured out that there is a loss on disposal, right? And the profit on disposal are always recorded on the debit side, whereas the losses are always recorded on the credit side. So we can just record this loss under the heading of income statement, since this loss is to be recorded in our income statement. So that's income statement with the value of 5,000, because that's the loss we figured out. And in order to see whether our calculations is actually correct or not, both sides of this motor vehicle disposal account should be the same. So let's figure out the total. For the debit side, that's just going to be 40,000. And for credit side, that's going to be the sum of these three amounts. So that's 8,000 plus 27,000 plus 5,000, which results in the value of 40,000. We can see that our debit side and the credit side total is the same, which concludes that our calculations were correct. And this also concludes the fifth part of this question as well as this entire question. If you found this video useful, make sure you like the video and leave a comment below. And make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you do not miss any of these videos in the future. Thank you.